throughout the country. Pat Nunley on his way, broadcast the game tonight, the Frank Irwin Center, last time at the drum, as they called it for a long, long time. Pat, uh, Baylor reinvented themselves again. Did you think that's what they would do to create problems and mismatches for Kansas with how they use Jeremy Sohan? Yeah, I do, and that's a really good way to put it. You know, the reinvention of this team, the um, just trying to figure out how this team was going to win without its leading scorer, Cryer, and its leading rebounder, Chachua. And I, I really think that that first game against Texas was, was the first step towards that because lose Chachua early in the game, and they had to figure out on the fly what they were going to do. And, and so they, I think, have figured out that it, it's less about threes, or threes at least are their second look. It's really more about playing downhill, getting it into the lane, getting to the free throw line, which has been huge. Um, Sohan's been a part of that. Sohan is a 54% free throw shooter. He was five of six, I think, against Kansas. His shooting percentage since that first Texas game has gone way up. So there, there are a lot of good things, but having Sohan and Brown really elevate has allowed this team to take a step. Pat, one of the things uh, I've noticed, and this is this is more um, team wide and, and not so much a philosophy, but you know, last year they were a juggernaut. They didn't need to be gritty. I mean, they just they just rolled through people. The first fifteen games of this year, they didn't need to have any kind of you know gumption and fire. I mean, fire is a kind of a relative thing, but this team is is developed a real toughness and grit uh, in games where they they can they just fight and claw. They do, and I really think it's, it's a championship mentality. When, when you have won a Big 12 championship, when you have won a national championship, I think they just understand having lived that, not, not everybody on the team this year was there last year, but ha now understanding that, I think they have that grit, and they understand that if they don't have it, they're going to be just another basketball team. So it's cultural. I really think that. You know, Coach Drew and his staff have talked, for years now about how toughest team wins and that's the case and so right out of the gate the last you know the first thing they're going to put up on their scouting report is that it's toughest team wins and if we're not tough particularly in this league we're not going to play the kind of physical basketball that wins championships Pat, uh, just in terms of the atmosphere on Saturday, I mean, I know you've seen game day roll into town before with varying results, but uh, when they needed the fans, the students, uh, you know, everybody to show up, that was a pretty uh, intense, electrifying, and, and much needed uh, crowd on Saturday. Yeah, it was electric. I, it's the best I've ever seen, and I've been doing it for a long time. I, and I thought when we went down double digits early, I felt like we were okay because – it wasn't going to be a blowout. And if they could just get a run together and, and finish the half within striking distance, they did that. Then that crowd was not going to let them, uh, sort of die on the vine. That, that crowd, I think had as much to do with the win as anything else. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it really was. And, and Craig brought this up a minute ago and, and Paul, we've discussed this in the past. Normally, there have been times when Baylor would have a big moment in sports, whether it's football or whether it was men's basketball or whatever. Women, we know, dominated for a long, long time, and they have a chance to win it all tonight, the, the regular season, a co-championship at least. But they would kind of like blank the bet. It was like, not that they would play poorly, and sometimes they was too big for them. Do you feel like because of what Scott's built and who they are now, that even if they had lost that game by 10 or 12, it would not have been because they hyperventilated? I totally agree with that. They just don't do that anymore. When they lost at Kansas, and, and they were manhandled. I mean, that was a bad day. Um, that was an aberration. I mean, we haven't seen that in a long, long time. And they've, they've come back from that. They've learned from that. They've played well, really, since that time. I think it's that. They're, they're not going to hyperventilate. They're going to have bad nights. It just happens. It's, the, the league's too good to avoid that. They think differently now. I think the whole program thinks differently now. It's the expectation that when you come to Baylor and play basketball at Baylor, you're in the big time. You're, you're as good as it gets, 
And so all the other things that go beyond just what you're doing on the floor, it's the, it's your attitude. It's the way you think is part of the success of this program. And I think it's carried on. I, I said a minute ago, but I reiterate it now. It's cultural. It really is. It's who you are when you wear a Baylor basketball jersey. Pat, what did you think of Flo Thamba offensive juggernaut the other night? I think he's the key. I know we've talked a lot about Sohan and Brown and others. I think Flo Thamba, since Chatua has gone out, has been the key because he, he had a double double against Texas first time. He had a career high 18 against Kansas the other night. He had nine rebounds. He is beginning to finish at the rim. He's starting to make free throws. I've always felt like the growing edge for him was to finish. When he, when he gets the ball on the offensive glass, you got to put it back in or you got to get fouled and you got to make free throws. And I felt like he's left a lot of points on the table by not being able to do that. Well, he's doing it now. And his minutes are way up. He played 33, I think, against Kansas. So he is, I mean, he's another guy that's won a championship in the Big 12. He's won a national championship. And he understands we're not playing that low post position by committee anymore. It's not Chachua and Thamba. Thamba's got to lead the way when we're playing a little bigger. And he, he has just played better basketball than I think he has ever played in his Baylor career, and I hope it continues. Did you feel like that was somewhat of a national coming out party for Jeremy Sohan? Yeah, I think it was. I mean, he's played really well, but to do that, uh, on on the day that, that it was, started with college game day, finishes with uh, the premier college basketball game in the country. For him to do what he did on that stage, there are a lot of people saying, wow, I mean, that, that guy is really special. And and I think and Brown falls into this category too. Those guys are sophomores now. They are, they're kids. Neither one of them is 19 years old. Lit. I don't think they'll be 19 until the summer. So they, they don't look like kids. But still, they're, they're learning and they're growing every game. I think both of those guys have gotten to the point now where I think they understand. They, they've kind of spit the bit out. They're playing with confidence. They're taking some threes. They've got to take some threes. And we're seeing we're, – we're getting a glimpse of the best those guys have to offer. And it's just a glimpse. I think there's more to come from both of those two guys. So, I, uh, you know, when, when they had some of the injuries earlier, uh, it was like, okay, guys are getting minutes that maybe weren't, and so perhaps it makes them better because they're also playing out of position at times. And then, of course, then you had the Chama Chachua injury, and you're like, oh, my God, is that going right. to even matter? Um, Bonner with what he's providing. And now you see this change in the lineup. Did they have just, mm -hmm. just enough time to finally get a practice or two in to be able to use what they're doing now and kind of tweak it next uh, couple of games before the tournaments? Yeah, I think so. I hope so. You know, you, you can't just – when when Chachua went down and with Cryer out, it does change the composition of the team. And you've got Sohan playing the five a lot when they go smaller. And he's been really effective at that. But that's a bit of a shift for him. Uh, but when he plays there – he is a matchup nightmare. And so it's been nice, but you can't just, I don't think, just flip a switch and have Sohan understand how his role changes some and what he now has to do with the thinning out of the roster. Yeah, I mean, I, I think now with several games under their belt, hopefully they're starting to figure it out and get comfortable with it. I think it all started in that Texas game where they played really, really well without Chatua. And it's given them confidence. And these guys are starting to understand what they're there to do. You know, Bonner's a good example. Bonner's not doing one thing that he's not supposed to do. The things he's supposed to do, he's doing really pretty well. Pat, what do you think it'll take for James Akinjo, who, who has not lost any confidence, it appears, to get his shooting no. touch back? Keep shooting it. Mm -hmm. Just keep shooting it. Uh, you know, it, it's the old thing, and I've been told this a million times, that ball is not going in if you don't shoot it. <laughs> and, right, and the jury is in on whether he can shoot it or not. So you keep shooting it. You keep firing it. But I, I, felt, I feel like 
uh, and this is just me talking, his road to the NBA is not scoring. His road to the NBA is creating, and it's assists. You know, he's, he's gonna, he is more effective if he's getting eight assists than he is if he's getting 14 points. Now, if he gets 14 or 15 and eight assists, that's a pretty good day. But to, for him to understand, nobody distributes the ball the way he does, and that's Akinjo at his very, very best. I think he's starting to understand that. that it's going to go in. It'll go in sooner or later, but it's not going in if he doesn't shoot it. So, uh, Pat, uh, 80-63 to 63 just uh, a couple of weeks ago, just a lo- little over a couple of weeks ago. What's changed in the last 16 days uh, in terms of this matchup with Baylor and Texas? What are you looking for tonight? It's a good question. I, you know, I think what's changed is the, the atmosphere and the venue. Uh, this is the last game that they will play in the Irwin Center. I was there for the for the first season of the Irwin Center as a player, and now I'll be there tonight uh, to see them shut it down. So we're going full circle. But it is senior night. They are they're playing for an NCAA tournament berth. I think they're there now, but they want to get better and better. And now that we come in as the national champs, there's nothing like a win over the the defending national champions. So I think it's all of that. I think they're going to play better. The crowd's going to be crazy, which is a little unusual for Texas. It just is. They don't typically have a hostile crowd. I think they'll be hostile tonight. There'll be a bunch of them there. Um, I think we're up for it. I really do. I think we're playing well. There's there's no stage you mentioned earlier. They're not going to hyperventilate. That will not happen. I think they're at a point now where they found a bit of a groove. This is a tough place to play. And they are hungry for us, I promise you. But it's going to be good. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, Baylor's had their had them, uh, owned them quite a bit now after it was just awful uh, early on, even during Scott's years, as you know. Pat, thank you, man. Be careful. Have a great broadcast. We right. appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Pat Nunley. Thank you, guys. All right. You too. Broadcast analyst for Baylor uh, Men's Basketball Radio with us on Sikkim 365 Radio. And and Texas, by the way, had to start learning how to play without one of their best players in Trey Mitchell, who just basically disappeared and had some personal reasons. And his father tweeted out about Chris Beard. Well, you know what they did? They kind of came together. And that was – I saw someone mention that it was a, a program defining win at West Virginia. That weren't that, – they're 15 and 14, West Virginia. But it was on the road without Trey Mitchell. Timmy Allen was huge in that game. And uh, I don't think that's really what the person meant. It was just the fact that they were able to win a game on the road in the Big 12 despite a little bit of drama uh, inside the program. When we come back, Arkansas.